Welcome to our April wedding market update. We're going to be covering mastering communications with Gen Z. And this is where we're going to be talking through Gen Z. This is the audience whose age now will be from about uh, 24 and older. And this is an audience now who make up a third of engaged couples from this year. So all their behaviors, Gen Z's, this audience, which is only going to get bigger uh, as time passes through. So all the trends they're doing today are just going to rise over time. So you can almost uh, see into the future. What also happens is the, the younger generations influence the older generations. And that's where you'll see actually everyone moving and following the younger generation. And that's where seeing some of these behaviors and being ready for them early means your company is going to be best set for dealing with these couples and securing lots of business. Um, so our agenda, we're going to be talking through the values and behaviors of Gen Z their communications preferences, how to do show rounds, if you do show rounds as a, as a business, uh, as a venue, but even if you're doing in-person meetings as a, as a different supplier, things to really bear in mind. Then some of their favorite wedding trends. And finally, as always, our shout outs to the industry and what's going on in the industry. So um, kicking off on behaviors and, and values. So on the values of Gen Z, there are five key values to think about in your business. I'll have to go into all of them. And then we'll be talking about five behaviors that I'll dive into. So first up on values, the first is diversity and inclusion. And this is where when a couple is choosing the business to work with, they're putting so much trust in their wedding suppliers and their wedding team and their wedding venue. And that, that trust comes from often an emotional connection trying to work out, do these people relate, does this person relate to values that I hold true? So showing off and showing that, that diversity and inclusion matters to you, that is important to your business and celebrating it, a really great way to uh, show that off. Also by not showing it off and not, not, not recognizing it uh, is, is, a, is a huge missed opportunity. It might feel like something um, that if it's not there, doesn't, it doesn't exist. But actually, couples are looking for this. They want to know, dealing with a, a, a modern-minded business, that's, that's how they'll build some connection. The same with social and environmental responsibility. So showing off how you care about the wider world. Again, showing your values. This is whether it's through sustainability. We've got sustainability filters on Briper that you can tag to your venue. You can show off sustainability awards. We've seen some wonderful venues recently becoming B Corps which is an amazing achievement and allows you to stand out with couples. Um, and those two of diversity, inclusion and social and environmental responsibility, them coming together shows you as a very like societally conscious business that often show to a couple, you know, you're more uh, uh, modern minded or, and, and that's, that's very helpful for building trust with them. And is just great for the world, obviously. Um, the next one is on digital fluency and technology. So Gen Zs have grown up with social media. That's one of the one of the, uh, the key sort of milestones of, of, of that influences Gen Z and of smartphones being completely prolific in their lives. They grew up with smartphones. Um, so that's where they're used to dealing and, and we'll talk through their communication behaviors in detail beyond this, but showing you're, you're digitally fluent and, and used to technology, that builds a lot of connection with the couples as well. When you think of authenticity, so this is incredibly important to couples, uh, to Gen Z couples. So if you think of apps, if any of you have been on uh, TikTok, I hope many of you have, or gone onto uh, Instagram Reels, you'll see what's moved from maybe Instagram's most obvious example is Instagram was all about hyper-filtered, uh, polished photos, and it was just photos. And now if you look at something like uh, Instagram Reels or TikTok, or even apps like Be Real, if you've come across that, it is all about showing authentic uh, videos about yourself behind the scenes, not perfectly edited, much more showing personality than here's some edited photo of me holding a glass of champagne, which Instagram was, you know, maybe a, a decade ago. Now it's about showing that depth of character of who's behind, you know, it's about personal brand and things like that. And that's where 
showing storytelling, showing we're not a building, we're a loved venue. We, you know, here's the personality, here's our head. So we have our cows you'll see on our Instagram, of our wonderful team members. We care about the nature of, of our estate enormously. Showing that just builds up this authenticity of, oh, I'm not dealing with some sort of acerbic uh, corporate that doesn't care about me, I'm dealing with some real people who I'm going to put my trust with. And then finally on transparency, and I know I always bang on about this, but being transparent with your prices, making sure communication is straightforward. The Gen Z audience has grown up with the internet, with infinite information and transparency. They're used to, you know, they've never been into an estate agent. They've just been on right move. They've never been to a travel agent. They've just used Skyscanner. If they're looking on Airbnb, they're going to see a price of absolutely everything. If they're on Just Eat, whichever one, they have full transparency. Amazon, whatever. And just imagine they have infinite information and uh, at their fingertips, and that's what they're used to. And that's where coming to uh, you know, a different world of weddings that they won't have been into before, they want to feel comfortable. And as soon as it's no pricing or things feel a little... Um, uh, shady or hidden that that's you know they're completely allergic to that so showing that transparency allows you to build trust then also showing that authenticity allows them to fall in love with you as well as their partner um and then thinking through digital fluency means they're comfortable dealing with you that doesn't feel like this big sort of age gap or communication gap and then finally on those society sort of responsibilities allows them to connect on a sort of values way um, when we think of their behaviors on, on affecting your marketing, how to think about your marketing. So first up, as I've just um, said, you know, they're digital natives. They are so used to phones and, and everything online. So make sure you're mirroring that. They're going to be across lots of social media sites. You know, they're going to double check you before uh, before they book you. Showing that 360 holistic view so you look really strong. You know, again, probably due to mobile phones. Uh, everyone knows Gen Z has a shorter attention span. They're used to instant gratification of of um, of imagery, of reels, or TikTok, of this stuff. There's high higher uh, intensity, they're used to WhatsApp, not phone calls. They're, they're you know, Snapchat again, just sending images, not, not even bothering, um, you know, writing long messages. It's just like, how, how can we uh, move as quickly as possible? Um, think of that in your marketing. Think of if you're doing a video online, make it short and snappy. When you're replying to couples, we'll talk about this more in a moment, make it short and conversational. Do not send huge copy paste essays. Uh, they're not going to read it. It's going to feel incredibly unusual for them. Build that quick rapport. Get into conversation. You can always send them more detail over time. Um, but start building that rapport quickly. Think of uh, the majority of couples now met on dating apps. They met from swiping, not from uh, you know that that's uh, what they're used to. So so put that into your in, into your mindset when you think of all your marketing day to day. They have a visual preference for communication. You know, they're used to having a smartphone with a high resolution imagery and amazing camera phone on it. They're used to Snapchat and all these others I've just mentioned. Go visual. It's a way to stand out. Even if you're following up with couples, maybe you're phoning them. Also pop them a WhatsApp and send them some beautiful photos of your venue. It then lives on their camera roll, allows them to have a huge amount of information, connect a lot better than sending a huge email to their inbox. And, and we can talk about that more. And finally, that desire for instant gratification, this short attention span and, and uh, sort of impulsiveness and, and used to you know, getting what they want very quickly, uh, try and mirror that. So writing short responses, responding quickly, sharing the answers they're looking for, giving them the information up front and easily. All of that allows you to connect with this audience much better than, than um, trying to sort of uh, put any barriers up and, and draw it out because they'll just move on to the next one. They're on their phone. They want to go and find the right person for them and connect very quickly. Um, and, and 
you know, you, you'll get left behind the, the, the train or leave the station. So when we look at those communication preferences, you know, some of these numbers are quite stark. 60% of Gen Z respondents, we've done a huge survey on Brightbook where we're always serving our couples. This has actually come from Adobe. You can see who's sourced on this one. All the other stats come from, I think, uh, uh, sample sizes on Brightbook. But 60% of Gen Z respondents expect real-time responses. They're used to real-time. And the, the uh, remaining 40% expect responses within an hour. Okay, So that's a lot, lot faster than, no doubt, most people on this call. Well, that's what they're expecting. Um, and, and that's where you want to get to those responses. Sometimes we talk with businesses who say, oh, you know, we, we check our emails at, at the end of the week and, and then reply to everyone. If you've been waiting three or four days to reply to someone, they've probably already moved on and whoever's moving fastest will have already built a relationship with them. And even that fast response will help build that confidence. Even if you're perfect for them, but you reply a week later, it gives them a huge signal that this probably isn't a business I want to be working with. So it's really important to watch out for. When we look at the messaging I was saying, be informal, short messages, short and concise. They're three times more likely to open a chat with a push notification. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. And show personality. You're dealing with couples in an emotional, excited moment of their lives. Um, don't think you're dealing with a business. You are not writing a perfect letter in a, in a fountain pen. You're dealing with a couple who are excited, who want to chat and build rapport. So uh, often I find businesses, uh, you know, will feel, oh, I've got to be really professional. We're in a, in a work environment. Actually, we're trying to build a friendship with these people and just look, the different style you write in to, you know, even when you're writing messages, be like, if, if a friend of mine read this, would it, would, would they know it was from me? Or would they be like, I, can, I can't see you at all? Show off that personality. On Bridebook, something we have is our inbox, the way to send messages through the app. Um, and that we'd highly encourage that. And we see from all our couples prefer that. So that's puts all their communication in one place. It also allows us to send push notifications to let them know when you've replied. And it also allows couples, because a lot of our couples will both be on the app, on the account, to see the messages. So you would have seen us at a generation ago, lots of couples would set up a wedding email address, a free Gmail or whatever, so they could put those messages there. Now, actually, we're able to put that all in one place. They're doing their checklist on Brightbird. They're saving their shortlist. The couple's sending messages to each other of what they like or dislike about you know, the, their shortlist or what their partner's favorited. Um, by getting all that communication into one place, helps the couple enormously stay on track, but it also allows us um, to, to send push notifications and get you a quicker response and remind the couple if, if they haven't replied and things like that and do quicker replies. So we would highly encourage that as a hack. Um, most couples, as we constantly hear from, from our couples, emails get lost in their inbox. And also you're then competing with the rest of their emails and they'll get distracted by an email from their boss or a, a discount on some fashion or something like that, by messaging them into their, in, into their inbox, you get their full attention. And you'll see this on all the platforms you think of, Airbnb or, or Instagram or things like that. Imagine Instagram was sending emails into your inbox when you got a message to so just feel bizarre. That's how Facebook worked 15 years ago. Couples and Gen Z couples expect it to be in one place. That's what we're helping you do. You can also do smart replies and things like that, and we'll do automatic chases. So would highly recommend that. And then the other one is take a moment to review all your media. So not just on Brightbook, make sure your you know, make sure your profile's looking fantastic, but think across all that 360 of every touch point, how are you working for that short attention span? And that's where short, sharp videos, you know, get videos onto Brightbook. Add them onto your profile. You can just upload YouTube links. If you've got YouTube links from elsewhere, you can also add links that other people have shot and they'll add it onto your profile. Um, have, you know, focus galleries showing through, uh, you know, showing that whole, uh, the whole journey of your venue or your business and giving them choice and showing, you know, the venue in daytime and nighttime and the hall set up for a ceremony and for a dance floor and things like that. 
give them that ability to quickly look through and form that uh, form a fast opinion. Real weddings brings a lot of authenticity, shows them the sort of holistic view. Again, you can add those onto Brightbook and onto trends. We'll talk about those in a moment. So yeah, definitely connect your Instagram feed onto Brightbook. This is if you're a venue pro expert. This means all your Instagram will, will be live on your Brightbook profile and, and couples can see it all there. Here's, here's Hedza's one. You'll see us showing a whole mix um, uh, from Hedza and our personality and important things there. Um, I connect your Instagram. It allows couples, again, to have even more information in one place. It shows your recency and, and, and you're busy and then it gives them a lot of context. Um, on messaging, as we said, do your messaging through Brightbook. It allows us, you'll get your read receipts. You can chase couples up. It allows us to chase the couples. You can add templates so you can do a smart reply very quickly. It will take the name and all the details of the couple. So it's sort of one click reply to help you do a fast reply. You can set auto follow-ups. So if a couple haven't replied to you in 48 hours, the app will actually chase them for you. And um, yeah, and we can avoid email spam filters as in it's getting pushed straight onto your phone onto their phone so they'll see it instantly and they'll sit on their phone you know like a banner message like like you'll all be used to and a big shout out to our fastest responders uh breast and core a wilderness wedding venue well done to you and your teams in the last 30 days you were responding within a minute of your inquiries on average which is phenomenal you must have a lot of alerts on but that just shows and sets an incredibly high bar for everyone um, but it's it's phenomenal to see, and well, well done to both of you. We know you're wonderful venue as well. On show rounds, this is where, and this applies if, you, if you're an a in-person business as well, maybe you're a florist or a cake maker, but for venues, this is where Gen Z is a demographic that feels more stressed than, than, than other demographics. Uh, 46% of Gen Z, sadly, say they are stressed all or most of the time. 38% of millennials. This is a big Deloitte uh, survey uh, last year. So that's where setting this relaxed ambiance, setting them, um, building rapport, making them feel comfortable. They, they don't know the questions to ask often. They're a bit daunted. There's a whole new process. They don't know what, what they're supposed to be doing. Become their friend. Become Guide them through it. We're going to give you some trends and things like that. Help educate them. Help them get excited about certain things. And this is where, you know, Look for interactive elements on a show round. You know, give them an iPad, give them uh, uh, an incredible um, uh, um, uh, uh, photo albums of previous weddings. Uh, build rapport, offer them a glass of, of no secco or prosecco. No secco is non alcoholic prosecco, which is always a good one. So you can serve it even in the morning, they feel special with the flute. Get, take a selfie of them, you know, ask, do they want a photo outside the venue? You know, Build that rapport, make it interactive, make them feel comfortable. Um, look for personalization. You know, when you get a bride book inquiry, we'll tell you all those details on the side of what's important to them. Are they hunting for beautiful grounds or a certain style? And try and talk in that language. Say, oh, you know, I saw you're really interested in the grounds. Let's go out and see the main lawn or focus on, you know, what's been most important to them. So that authenticity, as we said, being uh, overly salesy, but just, just be yourself, build that rapport. They're there judging. Can I trust the most important moment of my life, the best memory of my life, and all the joy of my parents and friends and family with this person standing in front of me? Like, I, am I going to enjoy working this person for the next you know, 16 months on average it is from booking your venue to the wedding taking place? Um, am I going to enjoy connecting this person? The best way to show that is, is to be authentic. Um, and then also what's really important for Gen Z is showing off flexibility and looking for experiences. And that's where showing, um, you know, how you can make this unique, how you can customize it for them, showing we're not a, a wedding conveyor belt and we have strict rules showing you can make this a hyper personal moment for yourself. And that's what we'll be hunting for. And then, as we mentioned before, on sustainability, showing off where, where sustainability resonates in your business or, or items you've done. We've just installed solar panels on the roof of Hedsa. 
we, we collect all our rainwater, which does our automatic watering. And so the lawn's always looking good and things like that. Even just talking about those moments, we planted thousands of trees on the estate. Um, talking through that shows, you know, we really care. We really, we really do care. We have a fully sustainable wedding package as well, the Alexander package named off my dad who planted all those trees. So showing some of that, just you see my eyes light up a little bit, but just builds that connection. And, and, and again, it's, it was great for the world. So highly encouraged. So we're gonna go quick fire some wedding trends now to understand Gen Z. This might help you connect with them more because they might be fun to hear. But Gen Z love, these are five we're talking about. It might seem strange, these hyper um, uh, digital, uh, you know, impulsive, uh, um, uh, infographication audience are actually looking back in the past. And we'll talk through that a little bit. So cottage core is one here. This is a good word uh, to know. So cottage core is all about the more simple life, particularly for the countryside. Think of things like baking bread, gardening, sewing your own clothes. And this all comes back to Gen Z looking for, uh, the, knowing this is a busy moment, and, you know, life is extremely hectic and looking for that calmer sort of peace, that focus. Baking bread, we think of all these hobbies that especially were popular during lockdown, where it's like a moment of peace and a moment of focus. You know, cottagecore is really relevant. We see this, the fastest growing um, theme for weddings or what couples are looking for, for Gen Z is rustic. And then um, we also see something like nostalgia is very important for them. And this is their... Gen Z showing a deeper longing for a simpler time. You know, now the world's overstimulated. They're looking for you know a simple, calm, calmer time, and that's where you know how you talk to your couples and things like that. Get them. I, I think of a couple coming to our venue as them sort of entering our snow globe, our magical, peaceful world where they're going to have this incredible uh, memory. And uh, I'm thinking, how can we make them feel comfortable, make them excited? You know, they look for nostalgia, um, looking for, you know, that sort of uh, looking back in the past of simpler times. And also thinking, hunting for personalized, unique experience. They want their wedding to be as memorable as possible. Thinking, how do we make it special? Um, as we've said already, looking at climate conscious, also looking for secondhand items, looking for sustainability. Also thinking of colors. Um, and the color green is ruling for 2024. So it might be fun to, to mention in conversation. A bit more on colour here. These are the trends that are popular this year. I'll let you all reflect for a moment. Uh, how, how are you? Uh, how's your venue interiors or how the bouquets you're making or your cakes, things like that. But this is what's on trend and most popular with couples at the moment. Maybe more uh, uh, contrasting colours than, uh, than previously. And then when we look again on dress trends, this is where a lot of what we've already spoken through starts to come through. This is where, you know, there's a huge uplift in couples looking for colourful dresses and uh, um, looking for luxury and, and, and real detail, and then also looking for statement embellishments. And this is where you see couples are looking for that personalization, something different, something really sort of unique to them, but still caring about all those details, looking for something really important and special. And that's, that's what obviously a wedding is all about. So to sum it up, Gen Z are looking for suppliers who demonstrate their core values, okay? And those core values being diversity and inclusion, social environmental responsibility, digital fluency and technology, then authenticity and transparency. And think, maybe look through all of these, how could we show these off better? How do we, what, what, what do we know is important to us, but maybe we don't uh, show that openly or what are opportunities there? Think through where you can do that in your business, that will allow you to connect much better with your boss, Gen Z couples. Gen Z are looking for, for suppliers who communicate the way they can. So it be fast and concise. This is where they're looking for instant gratification. You know, be casual with personality, show off yourself. But for messages, not long emails. Think of short, sharp videos that get to the point, you know, focus galleries and real wedding content all line up with, with what Gen Z are looking for. And then finally, when they're looking for suppliers who provide a thoughtful and personal service, you know, make show rounds and meetings as enjoyable and easy as possible. You know, show flexibility, show, you know, you're going to cater for them and it's their day. It's that, you know, you, you, you can't, you're as excited about their wedding as they are. 
you know, show how you're personalized and show what you can do that's that's unique to them. Show off your latest trends. Say you know all about cottage core now and you will be connected with the Gen Z's like nothing and uh, um, be baking bread as they walk in and uh, be authentic. Show off yourself. They're trying to find a cut. They're trying to find people they're excited to work with. Join their sort of wedding dream team. That's incredibly important. And appreciate each couple being different. And that can be difficult you know, in the busy summer when weddings are back to back and things like that. Um, but then you know, this is this ultimate moment that we're so lucky in our industry to be part of and how to show that off. So quickly on to our final shout out. Welcome to 81 new wedding businesses to our amazing industry, the best industry in the world. So excited to have you all here. I've just spotted a little bit naughty. I think you're a photographer, but that sounds like a wonderful name. Welcome to the industry. Some shout outs. I want to hear everyone clapping and roaring for our team member, Laura, who broke a world record this weekend and ran the London Marathon dressed as a wedding cake and broke the world record by 45 minutes or something like that, which was phenomenal. Um, and, and beat, I once did the London Marathon and Laurie beat me by half an hour and I wasn't dressed as a cake. Um, so a huge achievement, she was raising money for the Wedding Wishing Well, an amazing charity that, that organizes weddings for terminally ill people. So we are very proud of Laura. A huge shout out to Ellingham Hall, who now been on private for five years, one of our first venues, and you're an absolute star. And also to Thornton Manor, who sadly suffered a fire, but is now back up and running, and we are all roaring you on, and what a beautiful venue you are. Uh, to Care Bearers Manor in Powys, who've just launched the weddings under new ownership, very exciting. And then Sun Street Hotel in Shoreditch, at the home of Gen Z, maybe, who are launching weddings next month. So I hope this is, uh, I hope uh, all of this is very useful to you. Four top reviews of the last month. Well done, uh, uh, Denroyd Farm, who got 15 weddings, the In-N-Out Club in London, in Piccadilly, which is an awesome location, uh, who got 24 uh, reviews, and finally the Chase Country Club, who are our winner for the last month, getting 32 reviews. Reviews are immensely important for Gen Z, so do chase them up. This is how you show social proof, how they see that authenticity, how they build trust, Get reviews. Ask your couples once you've had a wedding, chase it down. It's the best thing you can get from a couple after a wedding. Um, and thank you for your own reviews, for our Trustpilot reviews. We care about them all enormously. We share every single one with the whole company. So please give us a review if you haven't already. We always love feedback. Um, and if you missed any of our updates, they're always on, they're even on Spotify, they're on YouTube. Email your account manager, we'll send them over with huge different topics on pricing, on understanding all the different audiences. And we're always here to help. That's the goal of Pride. Well, here are other reports you can find. Enormously appreciate all your time. If you haven't yet, please do give us a trust pilot and we will speak soon. All right, cheers. Bye-bye.